Hello everyone, this is Philip from PPLD, and I'm here to give you a quick breakdown on what you need to build your own computer. We're going to be looking around inside a PC that I built recently. Building a PC can seem intimidating, but it's not as difficult to do as you might think. There are lots of guides out there that can help show you the individual steps. Let's start at the beginning. When you are building your PC, your two primary concerns are going to be cost and functionality. What do you want your PC to be able to do? Different applications have different requirements. One of the most popular uses of a custom computer is for gaming. Gaming PCs will emphasize graphic processing capabilities. Once you know what you want your computer to be able to do, you can start shopping for components, finding a balance between the price of each piece and how much it meets your needs. The case is where all the parts go. Cases are available in a variety of sizes, so you'll need to be sure that all of your components will fit into the case you select. You'll want to verify that your case is compatible with your needs, too. For example, do you need an optical drive in your PC? If so, you'll need a case that supports at least one external 5 and a quarter inch bay. That means it's accessible from outside of the case. The case is also going to determine the primary aesthetic or look of your PC. You can play around with colors, materials, and more. In my case, I chose a PC with an acrylic side panel. So you can see the components inside at all times. Power supply. The power supply connects your PC to the outlet and connects to your other components. Some power supplies have cables already connected at the power supply end. Others, like this one, are modular and have cables that disconnect at both ends. These allow a great flexibility when choosing how to guide your cables through the PC case. Some power supplies are partially modular and have some of the cables permanently connected to the power supply. Your case will have a spot for the power supply, and how the power supply sits in the case will be determined by the placement within it. This power supply sits at the bottom of the case, facing down to vent the heat out of the case and away from the other components. Motherboard. Your motherboard is where everything comes together. All of your components rely on the motherboard to communicate between them. The motherboard you choose will determine how many other components can be added to your computer and how they will connect. When installing your motherboard, you need to be extremely careful. You'll find standoffs with your motherboard, little brass bits that screw into the case and prevent the motherboard from coming into direct contact with the metal of the PC case. The motherboard is then attached to the standoffs with additional screws that go into the standoffs. It can be helpful to install other components that live on the motherboard, before attaching the motherboard to the case. Processor and Cooler The CPU, the central processing unit, is the brain of your computer. You can't see it beneath the cooling unit right now. But there are two main brands of processors readily available, Intel or AMD. Whichever one you want to get should be fine, but you need to make sure that your motherboard is compatible with your processor. Each motherboard is built to work with one brand or the other, and they are definitively not interchangeable. Be very careful when connecting your processor to the motherboard. The pins on the back of the processor are incredibly delicate and are critical to proper function of the PC. Your CPU should come with a basic fan and heatsink to prevent it from overheating. You can swap that out for a higher end cooling system with a bigger heatsink and fan like I did or even install an all-in-one liquid cooler if you're looking for something that will want run quieter. You'll need thermal paste to create a layer in between the top of your processor and the bottom of the heatsink. If you purchase a separate cooling system, it should include a tube of thermal paste, but the processor generally won't come with some. Here you can see the motherboard with the cooling system removed as well as the RAM. The processor is visible, locked into the socket, with a little bit of thermal paste still visible on the top. GPU Video card 
While the motherboard provides some basic graphics processing capability, a dedicated graphics or video card will take the load off of the processor, allowing for greater quality. If you're building a gaming PC, check the specifications required to run specific games that you want to play, and try to build your PC with the capability to do more than the bare minimum required. Part of the beauty of building your own PC is that you can upgrade individual components as time goes by without having to scrap the whole thing and start over. So if you're not able to get the graphics card you want now, you can still build your PC and add the desired card later. RAM Random Access Memory, or RAM, is short-term data storage. RAM will almost always be installed in two modules. Your motherboard will likely have four slots for memory modules. Your RAM should include instructions for which of the two slots to use. Depending on your motherboard, you'll have one or two latches on the sides of the memory slots that will need to be opened to put the modules in place. They should automatically pop back into place once you've installed the memory modules. RAM is frequently sold in paired modules, as you should use two modules of the same size and brand to prevent issues. Some RAM modules include their own cooling functions, and some modules even come with built-in RGB lighting, little LED lights in red, green, and blue that can create a huge array of colors, for fun. They should automatically pop back into place once you've installed a memory module like so. Hard drive. The hard drive is your main data storage for your PC. Any files you need to save for later use will be located there. There's lots of options for hard drives, with hard disk drives or solid state drives that can be connected to your motherboard via a SATA cable. More recent solid state drives, called NVMe drives, can be mounted directly onto the motherboard, saving space and reducing the number of cables running through your case. Most drives that you can find now will be at least 500 gigabytes of storage. If you're going to be playing a lot of games or doing a lot of video or photo editing, a bigger hard drive will be critical. It's not uncommon to find drives in excess of 2 terabytes, 2,000 gigs of storage. This hard drive sits on a removable rack that slots directly into the side of the case. At this point, power cables and SATA cables can be attached, connecting the hard drive to the motherboard and power supply. Networking capabilities. If your motherboard doesn't have built-in Wi-Fi, you may want to buy a wireless card. This will allow you to connect to wireless networks and not be restricted by proximity to an ethernet cable for online access. In this case, I used a wireless card that plugs into one of the open PCI slots on my motherboard. Monitor. The display from your computer needs to go somewhere. Visual and audio data is set to your display, allowing you to interact with your PC. You can use any sort of monitor you like, provided it has the capability to connect to your motherboard or video card, usually via an HDMI cable. While HD televisions can be used to this end, they're not always ideal. Screen resolution is going to be the biggest factor, followed by audio output. Some monitors and TVs have speakers built into them, while others require external speakers. Again, consider your plans for use. Keyboard and mouse. Every computer needs an input device. The keyboard and mouse let you navigate and interact with the computer. It may seem kind of obvious, but not everyone has one on hand already the first time they build a computer. There's options here, too. Wireless keyboards and mice are convenient for cable management, but they require batteries, where wired devices simply have to be plugged into your PC. Depending, again, on your needs, you can choose a wide array of keyboard and mouse styles for improved performance or comfort. Operating System Your motherboard will come with a basic input-output system, or BIOS. This serves as the basis for installation of an actual operating system. It'll help you find out if all of your installed components are working correctly, but it is not an operating system in and of itself. While most PCs you buy will be running a version of Microsoft Windows, you may want to look into a Linux distribution as an alternative. There are lots of different versions available. Your operating system can be installed via a CD if you have an optical drive, or via a USB drive. 
There are a lot of sites out there where you can find compatibility guides to ensure that all of your components will fit into your case and that you'll have adequate power for everything. Newegg and PC Part Picker are two that I've used in the past, but most part manufacturers will also have guides to installing their particular components. Be patient with yourself, read the directions, and you'll be just fine. I hope that this has provided a nice overview for getting started with building your own PC.